Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name's Iman. I probably haven't loved the makeup look as much as this in a while. This is my favorite look I've done in a long time. And the reason is I did everything completely different than I normally do. The way I did my foundation, my concealer, my powder, like literally everything is so different because I recently went to a masterclass with a makeup artist. She just did makeup in this incredibly beautiful, super natural, totally different way that I do makeup. And I'm just gonna show you guys what she did because it turned out so beautiful and I'm in love with this makeup and how natural it is. So if you love natural makeup like I do, and if you wanna look like the best version of yourself, then definitely keep watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button before we start and add me on Instagram at Iman. All right guys, let's get into this look. I think you're gonna love it. Let's get into this makeup. So like I was saying in the intro, what kind of inspired this whole video idea is because I went to this masterclass recently and it was a makeup artist for Chanel and she basically does just like celebrities, red carpet looks. So she works on like Diane Kruger and all of these like A-list beautiful female celebrities. And the way that she did the makeup on the model was just so different than how I've been doing makeup. It's so different than like kind of what I've been seeing people doing online, especially on YouTube. I think we can really get into like certain habits. One of the things that I loved, it just kind of reminded me a little bit on how I used to do makeup back in the day when I used to do it like for magazines shoots and working on models and stuff like that and even like for for clients like it was just like this very natural undone less is more approach to makeup and that is the vibe for today's video. So the first thing I'm starting off with is the MAC Prep and Prime. I love using some kind of refreshing spray to just freshen up my skin, like rose water or the MAC Fix Plus is one of my favorites. This is one of my favorite ways to start prepping the skin. And I think like that's another thing that I really noticed is how much prep professional makeup artists do. I like forgot about that. <laughs> I remember we used to spend so much time just prepping the skin. So then when we actually come to do the makeup, we're really not doing that much. So for the lips, I'm using a classic Burt's Bees. This is just like my go-to lip conditioner. I have these everywhere, in my car, in my purse, all over my house, because <laughs> they're always just so nice to have to make sure you never have dry lips. The current primer that I am loving is from Laura Mercier. This is part of their brand new line of li uh, primers that they just launched. They came out, I believe, with like five different ones. The one that I'm using today is the hydrating primer, and this is part of their Pure Canvas Primer collection. I also have their blurring primer, which I'm gonna use a tiny bit of that as well, but I'm starting off with the hydrating primer. So you guys can see my skin has like this beautiful dew from that spray that I just sprayed. And now this hydrating primer is gonna give us even more of a glow. This just gives the skin so much hydration, totally preps the skin before we apply foundation. This just feels amazing on. I love doing this step. I personally love using something like this to hydrate my skin and just like push it in. And I feel it makes foundation go on so much creamier. That's why I love primer. <laughs> okay, so once I have my hydrating primer on, I like to go in with my blurring primer. So the great thing about the hydrating primer is that this works on all skin types. Dry, oily combo works on everyone. The blurring one, I feel I love using it in these areas where my pores are a little bit more visible. So it just kind of disguises that a little bit in a very, very natural, subtle way. It just fills in your pores. So then when you go to apply the foundation, then the foundation has this really nice flat surface to apply to rather than having the foundation go and sink into your pores. This will stop the foundation from doing that. And it's just like super subtle, but makes a big difference. So to me, these prepping steps are essential 
when you're just doing like an everyday makeup so you don't have to wear as much makeup at the end of the day. That's kind of the whole point. Okay, so for foundation today, you guys, I wanted to use like a very, very lightweight foundation. Two of my favorites for that are the Dior foundation. If you're looking for like super sheer coverage, I love this one. Another option, this is brand new. This is from Makeup Forever. They just launched this foundation. This is called the Reboot. This is kind of like my go-to for this type of look. It's just enough coverage, but still super, super lightweight. So the way that I'm gonna apply this foundation foundation today is very similar to the way that the makeup artist applied it. So she used a brush and then she used her fingers. So I'm going to try that you guys. I had to dig hard for this brush right now because I haven't used a brush like this in so long, even though I used to all the time. She basically just applied the product where you need the coverage. Great thing about a brush like this is that it does not pick up a lot of product. So it's not like the usual buffing brushes and all that where they pick up a lot of products so you're gonna end up applying a lot this really doesn't and then it just kind of targets just exactly where you want this foundation is so sheer you guys the coverage is very 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 light by the end of this i'm gonna feel like i have absolutely nothing on my skin which is exactly what we're going for so she kind of applied it wherever you need coverage so if you feel like your skin looks perfect in that area you don't have to apply foundation there <laughs> that's the thing i think we've gotten so used to just like applying like full face of makeup, applying foundation everywhere, even though we don't really need it. So like in my forehead, my forehead doesn't really need foundation. So I'm just gonna apply a tiny little bit and then just go in and just blend it out with my fingers, which is kind of what she did. And I loved it, you guys. I just loved the final look on the model. It was just so... I don't know. It was just so beautiful and so incredibly natural. She looked like she had nothing on, which is the goal. So that is the goal. So I'm just kind of patting this into my skin. The best thing is that if you were right here in front of me right now and you were standing this close to my face, I would still look like I have nothing on which is exactly what I'm going for for this look. Like a true, no makeup, the most natural makeup ever. I pretty much used half of one pump. That's it, you guys. Like, that's amazing. In the areas where I do want a little bit more coverage, like this pimple right here, that's driving me crazy. And then this pimple over here, let's just cover those. So in the areas where I do want a little bit more coverage, I'm just gonna go back and just kind of really press it in with my brush, but that's about it. Okay, so just a little side-by-side -side comparison. We have the one side with the foundation, no foundation. All we're doing is just evening out the skin tone in the most incredibly natural way possible. I'm just finishing up the last little bit that was on the back of my hand, going in, adding anything in any little areas that I want, just a bit more coverage. But overall, this is so beautiful. I love this, you guys. This foundation is amazing. If you guys are looking for your new go-to super lightweight, perfect for everyday foundation, pick up this, get your hands on it. Next up is concealer. This was another thing that the makeup artist at the masterclass did just using her fingers. And one big thing that I really picked up from her was one of the biggest mistakes I think that we make is that when we blend out our concealers, we blend it all the way up to like our lash line and that could just make your eyes look so much smaller. So it was a reminder and this is something that I've I don't know when I started doing that, but I did and it doesn't look good. It just reminded me how when you're blending your concealer, don't take it all the way up because it actually makes your eyes look puffier when you do that. So just try to keep it a little bit lower. Don't blend it all the way up to your lash line. And that was the other thing too. She didn't use any beauty blenders, no sponges, nothing. It was just basically her fingers. So I'm just applying this concealer straight on. Oops, how long was the camera out of focus, you guys? That drives me crazy. I'm sorry, by the way, if it was out of focus during all of that. 
I hope it wasn't. One of the big things that I loved in this look is the concealer application. It just, honestly, concealer sometimes. I remember this used to happen on brides when I would do their makeup. Like one of the things that people complain about the most is concealer because once your makeup is done you can start to see the lines and it starts to crease and all of that and you can really tell you have makeup on and this way of doing concealer literally like it looks there's like there's nothing which is what i love so i'm using a tiny little bit of the nars natural radiant creamy concealer which is still one of my absolute favorites i'm not doing the usual heavy v you know that we're seeing everywhere, including myself, keeping it a lot lighter, a lot more natural, and I'm not blending it all the way up. I'm just blending it just underneath my lash line and just with my finger. And this kind of just melts the product into your skin. And it just looks so incredibly natural. I love, love, love this. So the other thing that she did that I thought was so beautiful is that she highlighted and contoured in the most simple, natural looking way. So all she did was she basically just took a slightly darker foundation and just created like this very subtle contour. And then she used the concealer that she was using just to highlight. So I'm going to just highlight a little bit just in the center of my face. So it's just like chin area, blend that out with my finger. Did you see how like that just gave like my chin just like this really subtle natural highlight? Same thing with my nose. And like, you always wanna keep the center of our face a little bit more brighter and then the contours around the outer part of our face. Oh, I have this beautiful, super subtle, natural highlight on my forehead, down the bridge of my nose, and on my chin. Beautiful. And then for the contour, again, like in the most subtle way, all you need is a slightly darker foundation or even a concealer if you don't have a darker foundation. Going back with that foundation brush, I'm putting just a very small amount, just kind of like on the tip of my brush. And basically she just had the model just kind of smile a little bit and she just followed the natural contours of her face. It was super, super subtle. You're gonna see this is gonna automatically create this really natural contour without adding like a ton of product. And I love it. Like I feel like my face has definition around the outer part of my face. The inner part of my face has all the beautiful highlight. You could take a little bit from your brush and add it around your eyes. That's it. That is all she did for contouring, highlighting, super subtle. The next thing she did, I loved it. Basically, she said that she's not gonna powder until the very, whoops, oh my God. She's not gonna powder until the very, very end because by the end of the makeup, that's where you could really see where you actually need the powder because most of the time we don't need powder all over, but we just, do that anyways. So wait till the very end, see where you actually have a little bit of shine and that is where you need to apply the powder. Next up, she moved into brows. This is probably what she spent most of her time on. She just used brow pencils. I love Maybelline's brow pencils. They're some of my favorites. I right now need to get my brows done severely, you guys. I've been trying to grow them out before I get them done so they look extra bushy and extra unkept. So I feel like this brow process right now might be a struggle. This is the Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim Defining Pencil in Soft Brown. And then sometimes I love just taking like my puff just on my finger so I can rest my hand on my cheek. This really helps you have a little bit of a steadier hand when you're doing your eyebrows. I'm just using these super light strokes, fill in all of the little gaps. She definitely took her time when she was doing the model's brows. She took a lot of time. <laughs> when your brows are groomed, it just makes all the difference. And when I say groomed, I mean like professionally done, like professionally shaped and like groomed by like basically getting your eyebrows done, whether it's waxing or threading, because right now my shape is so all over the place. The hairs are too long. It just makes filling in your brows so much harder. So I 100% recommend getting your brows professionally done, you guys. Or if you do them yourself, 
just maintaining like a really nice brow shape is so important because it'll make your life so much easier. Now that I have my brows filled in, I'm going to set them with my all-time favorite brow gel. I've never loved the brow gel before, you guys, because I've literally never found one that I like, but you guys know that I'm obsessed with the e.l.f brow gel. It's so good. It's their clear brow and lash mascara. That's the exact name. So I'm just going to go in and what I actually like to do is I like to let that sit for a little bit. So I know that it looks really like extra bushy right now, but once it dries, then I kind of go in and play around with it. But for now, I'm just going to let that sit super bushy. Let that set sit set same thing <laughs> um but yeah so this is going to give us a very natural beautiful brow the main product that i'm going to use for the eyes is the laura mercier this is the translucent glow powder in medium deep so this is a bronzer as well which we are going to use as a bronzer later on but today i'm just going to use this as well for my eyes i'm just going to take a big blendy brush shake it off I just don't want powder going everywhere. That's why I'm really trying to shake off as much as possible. So we're gonna just use this color all over. This is gonna give our eyes a little bit of just super subtle shading. The reason I love this powder for this is because it is the glow powder and it has a very subtle bit of glow to it. So even though we're doing like this brown tone, once it, it hits the lighter in the right way, it picks up the light really beautifully. And I'm just using this in my crease, a little bit on my lower lash line, really blending it out past my brows. This isn't meant to look like this intense eye look. This is just framing your eyes to give them a little bit of shape, which actually makes a really big difference, you guys. And if anything, keep as much of the product, as much of that eyeshadow or as much of that powder on the outer corner and just kind of bring it in. So now that I'm applying a little bit more, you guys could really see that bit of glow in it. And again, it's just like super subtle, but really, really pretty. The next part for the eyes, very simple. All I want is to take a dark brown eyeshadow. I'm gonna be digging into my Catrice Times Iman palette. Let me clean this off. Hey, there it is, look how beautiful that is. Love it. <laughs> don't, don't tell me about the inside though. Anyways, so I'm gonna be taking this super dark brown, maybe dipping my brush in the black as well. I'm gonna use a flat brush like this. And the key with this is to make it look like it's just your lash line defined. That's it. We're not trying to create like a liner liner. So I'm actually just pushing this dark brown shadow into my lashes to start. So I'm literally just pushing it into my lashes and this is gonna give us a little bit of definition. And then once I get to that outer corner, all I'm doing is I'm kind of just putting my brush underneath my lashes and just kind of flicking it up. And using a brush like this is gonna really help make it super simple for you guys. So I have a tiny little bit of product left on my brush, not a lot. I'm just gonna really gently blend it into my lashes on my bottom lash line. And since this is a natural look, you guys, I will not be doing lashes today. And just to prove to you guys that I do read all of your comments, I had a few comments recently of people saying that they want to see looks without false lashes, since not everybody wears false lashes, and I totally get that. So today I will not be applying falsies, but of course we are going to do a full lash look with lash curler, this is a must and mascara. So if you don't curl your lashes, you guys, I'm going to plead with you to try it because honestly, it is a game changer for your eyes. It just opens up your eyes so much. It's a difference between, it's just like a night and day difference. So definitely curling your lashes is such an easy, simple way to just give a little bit of drama to your eyes. And when you're curling your lashes, you guys, hold the curler down, pump it three, four times really to get a nice curl. For mascara today, I'm going to be using the Big Ego Mascara from Tarte. This is my first time trying this, so let's see how it is. I do love the packaging. This is a really big mascara wand, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to use this for my bottom lash line. I like to kind of stand the mascara up 
and just flick that outer corner to make it stand out even more and it makes it look like you're wearing falsies. This actually is, looks pretty good, you guys. This looks like I'm wearing false lashes. Not bad. So I do feel like that mascara wand is a little bit too big for the bottom, so I'm gonna use the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara for my bottom lashes. Now that I'm done my makeup and I'm looking I don't need that much powder, which is kind of crazy because normally I would have just piled my face with powder from before, but I don't really feel like I need that much. So I'm just gonna use a tiny little bit just to make sure that the makeup sets and it doesn't budge at all, even though it looks fine to me, but I'm just gonna go for it. This is the It Cosmetics Translucent Bye Bye Pores Powder. I started using this recently and I totally love it. And I love using it with my Tati Blendyful, Tati Beauty Blendyful. Press that in where I tend to get shiny, which is just kind of like the inner part of my face. So you guys could see this part looks super matte compared to over here. And then this just really helps the shine just stay down all day. And this is all I'm gonna do for powder, you guys. That's it, I'm not gonna do powder all over. I'm not even gonna powder underneath my eyes. Like, because I didn't use a ton of concealer, I don't even feel like I need it, which is, Amazing. I'm gonna go back to that Laura Mercier translucent glow powder we used earlier. And now I'm gonna use it more as a bronzer all over. This is gonna give the skin a really pretty glow because like I mentioned to you guys, this has the natural glow in it in the powder. So this is gonna give like this really pretty subtle glow. And if you don't want the glow, you could definitely just use a matte bronzer. I just really love the way that this looks. So I'm using this around my temples, my cheeks, my jawline. The other thing I love too, you guys, is that once you have the bronzer on, it just goes so beautifully with the eyes and then it just makes everything look very monochromatic, which makes the makeup look a lot more natural because everything kind of just blends in together so it's not like you have all of these bright colors you know what i mean does that make sense i hope it does the one that i'm using is from bare minerals this is the bellini brunch blush i've used this before i love this color and i'm gonna apply this just at the very tops of my cheeks on the apples and blending back. And this is gonna really just bring everything together, you guys. These bare mineral blushes, I think I've talked about this before. They're some of my favorite blushes. Of course, the blushes from my Catrice palette are gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. I love those blushes, but these ones are really nice too. <laughs> I'm doing a pop of this sheer gloss on my lips. This is from Bobbi Brown. I absolutely love these glosses, you guys. This is called Crushed Oil Influse, <laughs> Infused Gloss in the shade Wild Card. They make these little stickers so small and the writing is so small, but this is what it looks like. It's this beautiful shade, but I don't want this to be like a heavy glossy lip. So instead, all I'm doing is that I'm just gonna put this on. These are oil infused, so they literally feel like you're putting oil on their, on your lips. They're so nice, super, super comfortable. They don't feel like your typical gloss at all, you guys. But the way that I'm applying this is I'm just gonna put it on, and then with my finger, as you can barely understand what I'm saying, and then with my finger, I'm just gonna gently blend that out to barely anything. And the last little thing I'm gonna do, you guys, I'm gonna add a little bit of highlighter. I'm using my Catrice Highlighter Palette. <sighs> there's stuff dropping everywhere, oh my God, okay. So I love this palette because there's a bunch of different shades you could choose from. The makeup, makeup artist actually used a cream. I'm gonna use a powder, but what I did love is that she was super precise with where she placed it. Instead of like a big fluffy brush or a fan brush, I'm going in with something a little bit more precise. I love these double-ended brushes that Huda Beauty makes. She makes a ton and they're all great. And I'm just gonna be super precise with where I apply this. So I'm applying this right on the top of my cheekbone. And if you're not sure where to apply your highlighter, you guys, just kind of look in the mirror and turn your head around and see where the light is naturally hitting it and just apply the highlighter right there. So that's literally where the light is already hitting it. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of extra help. And then I'm gonna take that up a little bit around my brow area. 
And then I'm gonna take the smaller end of the brush, go down the bridge of my nose and add a little pop just on the tip there. And then I'm also gonna add a little bit in the inner corner just to brighten that up a little bit. I don't want this to be like my usual bam inner corner highlight because it's not what we're going for. We still want this look to be natural. <laughs> the sides of my nose, I love adding highlighter there. It just looks so pretty. And that's pretty much it. I think we're done. That is the final look, you guys, for this super natural makeup. I absolutely loved doing makeup differently. This was so fun for me, you guys. I've been doing makeup for so many years and like just watching other people do things in a different way was just so inspiring and it just kind of like rejuvenated me a little bit. Doing my foundation and the concealer and everything with my hands and my fingers and just like barely using any product, this effect, this final look is probably the prettiest makeup I've done in a long time. And I just feel like it suits me so much more than the heavy cakiness and all of that. Like I absolutely love that I barely used any products and it just looks so natural and I just don't feel like I need it. I just don't. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just so happy with how this turned out. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you wanna see more looks like this, you know what you gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. You gotta add me on Instagram, at Iman. If you recreate this look, do not forget to use the hashtag that I am promoting because I want you guys to use it because I'm looking up this hashtag and doing giveaways. The hashtag is inspired by Iman. If you post anything on Instagram, use that hashtag so you can enter the giveaway and so I can find you. So thank you so much for watching guys. I love you. <laughs> I don't even know what I was trying to say there. Yes, I love you guys. Thank you. And um, I will see you in another video very soon. Bye.